So what are the Carolina bays? So they're uh, elliptical depressions uh, that we find all over the eastern coastal plain mm-hmm. uh, from from south, um, you know, from just under New York all the way down through the Carolinas, through Georgia. There are a few in Alabama. And then they kind of you kind of don't see very many of them until you get to around Nebraska. Uh, mm-hmm. And then they pick back up in Nebraska. And so you have these these elliptical shaped depressions in, in, in Nebraska. So they're all very similar similarly shaped uh they all have this elliptical uh, orientation to them the orientation itself is actually pointing uh towards the great lakes of michigan Mm -hmm. uh, which is kind of a a telling sign of what they could be um they're 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 elliptical mm -hmm. and they're pointing towards the great lakes of michigan yeah yeah what do you mean pointing like like they are oriented towards they all have that that, uh, that okay so they're like they're egg shaped kind of yeah, well they're they are perfect ellipses, uh, ellipses most of them are you can actually mathematically um outline them and they they are perfect ellipses uh and the orientation itself have, like have they actually been like measured yeah yeah there's there's a guy we'll talk about um michael davius he's been he's measured over seventy thousand of these things wow. yeah and and measured them you know Labeled them. He actually has a, a survey. The uh, used to be called the Carolina Bay Survey, but now it's the Ovoid Basins Survey mm-hmm. um, because he started included some depressions that we find in Texas and things like that. They're not mm-hmm. all Carolina based. Plus, we got the ones in Nebraska too. So you know why we really need to get away from calling them Carolina Bays when they're you know found all over the place. Right. So right. Mm-hmm. So what is the conventional explanation for what these are? Well, uh, so the conventional explanation is that they are well well first of all there have been quite a few hypotheses on what they could have been mm-hmm. uh back in the 1930s and i've got a i've got an image here but back in the 1930s um when we finally had people flying in airplanes and being able to look down onto the ground overall uh they first discovered them uh in places <clears throat> like um like myrtle beach uh they started finding them in like the cape fear river valley uh, and, they, and they would start to take surveys. They would start to, to take a bunch of pictures. And back then, that's all they had was like aerial photographs. And then they would they paste them all together. Mm-hmm. Um, and even back then, this was back in the 1930s. Uh, and and they originally thought that these were created by meteors. They thought that that's this was pretty a, wild. Yeah, that they were a cosmic event. Um, George Howard has a story about his uh, his boss when he was working in uh, working on I think it was in the Senate um, and. Uh, his 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 boss, the senator, had property that had a whole bunch of these Carolina Bays on it, mm-hmm. uh, and he told him the whole story about how, yeah, back in the '30s and '40s, man, they thought that these things were meteor holes, and uh, they'd all go out and start expect, you know, looking for meteors, but nobody ever found any. Right, and so that kind of um, kind of you know pushed the thinking towards more of a uniformitarianism process. Like, well, if they're not meteors, and they they must be, you know, something more terrestrial it must be something right. you know because that's what uniformitarianism is is that you know the the terrain changes one gust of wind and one grain of uh, sand at a time uh and so the whole thought process shifted away from uh a catastrophic event uh to it being more of a uh, terrestrial or uniformitarianism uh, process to create these things, and that's kind of where they're at with it now. Even even today, you know, a hundred, oh, nearly a hundred years later, uh, they they still here. These are some of the uh, hypotheses that they had come along with, you know, from the 1930s to now. Um, and there's there's a list of them here, like spring basins. Um, you know, at one time is that on the very top right? Is that one of the Carolina Bays? No, no, it's not. That's um, what that's, is that? I think that's a crater. I think that's actually a crater. That's from, an actual crater. Meteor, yeah. Um, there are some people that think that they were beaver dams. Uh, and, and again, we're still going back and forth. This whole time from the 1930s until really the 1970s, it was back and forth, back and forth with uh, terrestrial versus catastrophic um, mm. explanation for how they formed. Um, Extraterrestrial bays. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so, you know, they even, some people even thought that they were beaver ponds that were like super flashed, uh, from a bolide event, um, that took place and, mm. and like flash steamed the, uh, the ground causing these, uh, some people thought that they were giant fish or, or whales or something, you know, mm. swimming around in circles and, you know, making nests and in, in the, uh, terrain of, of South Carolina, North Carolina, Georgia. And, uh, yeah. yeah. Are there no, there's no nothing that looks like this anywhere else in the world 
Uh, yeah, there. I mean, there are there are oriented lakes found all around the world, and this happens a lot. Where a lot of times the oriented lakes get brought into the conversation to dismiss these Carolina bays being so symmetrical. And uh, you know, I, I, I just I, the presentation that I gave this past summer uh, was called pseudo Carolina bays because when you start looking at the Carolina bays themselves, they're so numerous. There's so many of them that uh, uh, you know they're the dominant feature like they are the dominant feature on the east coast uh i would say maybe even second to to like the rivers that flow mm -hmm. along the coast um and so i you know i've got a bunch <clears> of examples can we see the ones that are used to dis to discredit sure. the carolina bays yeah the ones so they say that uh and how how do they use those other ones that are and where are they also so most of the time so there, there's a couple different kinds uh, and like i said the presentation i gave this summer i kind of went through all of them I uh, went through a whole bunch, mm -hmm. um, and uh, so so. <clears throat> here's a list that I that I put together of of the different Carolina or the different oriented lakes that oftentimes oh, okay. get used as explanations for the Carolina bays. Mm -hmm. I'll go back later and talk more about like what the current is current hypothesis is. Uh, mm -hmm. But um, they're not none of them are ellipses. None of them right. have raised rims. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we have a bunch of different types. Like this is a big one. The Thermokarst Lake hypothesis is that um yeah. we, and we do find these we you can see the images right here we do find them up in the arctic circle yeah um, in alaska you find them over in russia you also find them down in south america like like very south america mm -hmm. um but they all occur in places where you have permafrost and so permafrost is permanently frozen soil so mm -hmm. and that means that it's frozen like all year long the only the very top layers thaw out during the summertime the water pools in those areas and then the wind blows them and they, they start to form these yeah. circular shapes um but i don't <laughs> i wouldn't call any of those really elliptical now we this is an area in alaska that's wild yeah yeah this is an area in alaska and i could see if if you were just you know scanning through these images you're like oh yeah yeah that's that's what formed a carolina base but the areas where we find these carolina bays are nothing like this and even during the middle of the ice age even during the middle peak part of the last ice age mm -hmm. there was no there wasn't permafrost like this um and so and that's that's the time frame that they were saying that these were formed the carolina bays were formed mm -hmm. that really helps when you look at it with the lidar and it's something that i want to kind of focus on uh, today is just the use of this lidar and how much it is should be progressing the research on carolina bays so this right here is uh, is an image of um, the Thermokarst Lakes in Alaska using lidar, and we don't see the same the same features that we see with the Carolina Bays. Like we don't see the raised rims that you would see with all those Carolina Bays. We don't see that perfect elliptical shape, uh, and the orientations are all kind of off, and they kind of bleed in together too. Mm -hmm. So when you compare that to places like this, uh, and this is in South Carolina, it's close to McIntyre Air Force Base. Mm -hmm. um, and again, this is just using Google Earth, which, you know, 20 years ago, we didn't really have. And uh, so within the past 20 years, we've had Google Earth. And now within the past like 10, 10 to 12 years, we can add the LIDAR to the terrain itself. Oh, wow. And now we see how many of these elliptical depressions completely Dude, they're covered everywhere. They're, everywhere. they're everywhere. so random too. They're everywhere. So these are Carolina Bays. Uh, and, and they're not all the same shape. They're all different and little. Well, so this is kind of a, it's, it's, it's almost the, the, the terrain is, um, the terrain is <coughs> steep right here. So, so mm -hmm. the, the Carolina Bay is formed a little bit differently here, uh, just because of how they, we think that this, these were catastrophic, um, um, uh, ice ejecta and we can get into that in a few minutes, but, um, but the terrain here having that steepness to it uh, causes it to to deform as as it's being formed. Um, another example that they often get confused with is uh, the Playa Lakes or the or the um, that we find these in Texas. Mm -hmm. uh, you also find them in places like Australia. Uh, you always find Interesting. them. Interesting. Yeah, you always find them in river basins. Uh, or areas where you had sheet flooding, where, where a tremendous amount of water flood, flooded over the uh, terrain, like you find in Texas. Um, here's an area in Texas that's kind of close to, this is the city of Amarillo. Mm. Um, and when you look at the LIDAR Holy of that shit. area. Right? Now again, these are playa lakes. These are oriented lakes that were created from water uh, as water flowed over this, this plain at the time. Right, so these probably formed before all of this. This was all underwater. 
Um, a long time ago, a long, long time ago. How long ago? I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I, I don't know about Amarillo, how far up that wow. was. But this is formed. And basically what happens is, well, I can go back to how they're formed here, where you have, it's usually very arid areas, and you have mm -hmm. lower water tables. And so when it, when it rains, the water pools up in areas, uh, and then it dries, and so you get these cracks. And so the next time it rains... The water quickly goes into the cracks, mm. fills it back up, mm -hmm. uh, and then you know. So, so you do end up with these like circular depressions um, that that we see, right? You know, here makes sense. Uh, but you also see that all of them have like a low point where there's some of them still have water in them, right? Uh, but yeah, those aren't Carolina bays. Okay, they're they're um, they're playa, playa lakes. Okay. Uh, here's another area in South Carolina. Again, these are going to be Carolina bays. This is close to Shaw Air Force Base. I should probably stop focusing on like areas around Air Force bases. But <laughs> <laughs> is there any? Is there what? What is the to you? What is the biggest smoking gun that these are meteor impacts? I don't think they are meteor impacts. <laughs> what do you think? They I don't are? think they are. So, so what I think they are. And again, I can go all the way back uh, to that original slide with the uh, the catastrophic versus the. Uh, the um, uniformitarianism explanation. Mm -hmm. um, I do think that they formed very quickly, catastrophically. Um, but now, like I said, we have better, we have the, the better uh, technology now with the, with the Google Earth. We have the LiDAR, um, all these things added together. Going back, you said you don't think they're... I don't think... You don't think they're comet impacts. I do not think... I think that they're the result of a single comet impact. You think it's ice? Not, not comet impact. I would say actually uh, an asteroid impact, but... Um, you think it's just ice fragments? That yes, were but like blasted yeah, secondary ice fragments <clears throat> from Michigan. All of these have orientation back to the Great Lakes, back to Michigan. Right, and so um, a comet hit or an asteroid hit the Great Lakes ice cap mm -hmm. and then ejected just tons of fragments of ice. That's south. that's what I or, or or something like that happened. Yeah. <laughs>